Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Speedlin Gonzalez in Texas. She is hearing a bond motion. And for a defendant who was previously found guilty of domestic violence, she's out on probation. While out on probation, she has 16 probation violations. She's remanded without bond. This woman now has been in jail for 30 days, and this is a bond hearing after that 30 days. I'll let you guys watch. Okay, Olga, you ready? Yes, Your Honor. Let's open the record in case number 690-000 in the matter state of Texas versus Ms. Priscilla Godina. Ms. Godina, you're on live. Can you hear us? Yes, Your Honor. Have you uh, consented? Have you given your attorney, Mr. Mark LaHood, and this court permission to go forward with this proceeding via video conference, also known as the Zoom app? Yes, Your Honor. Please stand by, Ms. Godina. I need uh, announcements from the attorneys and from probation, please. Hey, Mr. Ramos. Raven Penny for the state of Texas. Mark LaHood for defense, Your Honor. President Reddy. Probation. Yes, Your Honor. This is a hearing on um, Priscilla Godina. There was an MTR filed. I'm sorry. Yes, Your Honor. I believe this is a motion to set bond. It is right. It, it, it is a probation bond, right? A violation of uh, we were mandated without bond, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Correct. Okay. So, Ms. Martinez, are you going to want to participate in uh, this hearing in any way? Yes, Your Honor. I can answer any question you have. Okay. All right. So we have uh, Officer Martinez present as well from adult probation. Now, Ms. Godina, I do need to swear you in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, under, sir. Under penalty of perjury, should you lie to the court? Yes, sir. You may put your hand down, Ms. Godina. Ms. Godina, back on the 21st day of October of 2022, you submitted an application, a request to be placed on probation. It, and the court granted your request with the understanding that you were going to follow your conditions of probation and that you were going to follow the court order issued on that day. And you were placed on 12 months of probation on that day. I can tell you now that the state filed a motion to revoke your probation on January 12th of 2024. When you were placed on probation, Ms. Godina, um, the court warned you of consequences of you not complying. So when the court gets these types of violation reports alleging non-compliance on 14 different, 16 different instances, yeah. The court has some concerns about whether you should be out in the community, out on probation, because that's a privilege. And that's why this court remands individuals without bond when these types, not all violations, but these types of violations are alleged. And that's why you're here today. We're going to hear from the state. We're going to hear from your attorney. And we're going to hear from... Um, Officer Martinez. Now, this is a kind of a hybrid type of hearing. So, Ms. Uh, Godina, where do you live now? I have my up an apartment East Mitchell Street. And what's the apartment number? Who else lives there with you? My children and myself. How many kids are living there with you? I have two kids. I have a two-year-old son and an eight-month-old baby girl. And who's taking care of them now? Their father. And where does where do they, where where does their father live? Adele Avenue, San Antonio, Texas, seven eight two three zero seven. I'm not sure about the exact zip code. And are you working? Yes, I have two jobs. What are your jobs? I work at a thrift store and I work at an Italian restaurant. I've been working there for a couple of months. 
Okay. And I'm going to have some questions about how you can get into compliance, if at all, with probation. But we're, we're going we're gonna to get through this hearing. Uh, state, is there anything you want the court to consider in the way of an amount of bond for this type of case or conditions at that bond, knowing that Ms. Kadena is right now out of compliance or allegedly out of compliance with probation? Yes. Um, so I would ask for a $4,000 bond, um, being that she failed to report multiple times and those that alleged violations within um, yeah. the MTR. I think that goes to show that she okay. is okay. not one to comply with orders um, or to show up when she needs to show up. Um, I would also ask that there be a no contact order with Christopher Rigal Montes Jr. Um, that is the CW who was in the original case. Um, I believe he is the father of one of their children or two of their children. And he is the individual that does reside at Central Avenue. Um, as well, I would like to see her having um, at least a bi-weekly, or not bi-weekly, but twice every two weeks of drug testing. How is that? That's, that's, Let me ask the state something. Yes. How is how is that effective monitoring of drug use every two weeks? We know that meth is in and out of somebody's system within 48 hours. I mean, really, the only thing you're going to catch is maybe marijuana use. And that's what is alleged. I mean, but is there anything else you're looking for? Um, I would just like to see if she can be in compliance um, and follow mm. those those orders. I mean, if they're if you're looking for if you feel that that's inadequate, Your Honor, you, you can adjust that. If you feel okay. that it's unnecessary, you can take care of that. But I do think, I mean, going along the lines of her MTR is that there are marijuana violations and there are multiple of them. And I think so, that I would want her to be um, not doing drugs, you know, not uh, failing to check in. The fact is, if she's doing drugs, she could be a danger to her children and those children in our community. Okay. So that's that's my concern. Okay, and um, before I go to you, uh, Mr. LaHood, this is what I want to know. Are those kids with Mr. Villamontes? And um, Officer Martinez, I want to know if Mr. Villamontes was uh, the original complaining witness and what kind of contact order was part of her probation. So I'll go to you first, Mr. LaHood. What are you asking in the way of a bond? And how do we get her back into compliance here? Uh, sorry, Judge. Um, just briefly, as the court is well aware, um, she's been on deferred education for 17, almost 18 months. Um, not that it makes it much better, but all of the allegations in the MTR and the supplemental are technical violations, drug testing, reporting, community service, um, paperwork, and money zone. She has not picked up a new offense or violation with regards to any type of violence. So with regards to a no contact order, it makes it impractical when you have a child with, with somebody, but on top of that, when there's no um, subsequent history or repeated behavior of violence, I think that's an overly burdensome um, requirement on bond. With regard to the bond amount, Judge, she has been in custody for a total of 33 days. On this current MTR, she is currently on her 31st day. As she has told the court, she has a apartment on Mitchell Street over there by, by Juvenile. Um, she's working two jobs, and she is uh, a single mother for all intents and purposes, even though she has uh, been able to co-parent to some extent with, with her uh, baby's, baby's daddy. We would ask the court to lower the bond. With regards to a surety, whether she's paying 150 out of pocket, 200 out of pocket, or 400 out of pocket, the reality is that that bond is not going to be the burdensome. I think the, the, the true burdensome weight on her shoulders is the fact that she's been in custody for over a month. She's been gone from her children for over a month. And quite frankly, being that it's Easter weekend, she may not be released prior to Easter. Um, God willing, she will be to at least spend that time with her, with her children. And so had she complied with her, had she complied with probation, she would be off and completed already. We wouldn't be talking about Holy Weekend. You are you are right, Judge. Um, I, we can't undo what has already happened. All I can tell you is prior to the 
MTR being filed on January the 12th or 14th, I forget which day, mid-January. Um, since then, she has been in, in continuous custody for 31 days. Prior to that, she had only two days of custody, which is the actual arrest date, uh, you know, getting bonded and, and, and getting bonded out. I'm a firm believer that there is no better educator than me. And being gone from your kids for 31 days, as a parent myself, I, I, I can... I would argue that there is no better educator than that. Um, I, I would ask that the court set lower than four thousand dollars bond. I would ask that if the court want, deems it necessary to put a restriction, it be a no harmful or injurious contact, not a no harmful contact, because there there has been no supplemental file, no evidence argued by the state that would warrant um, a no harmful or a no contact order um, with her with her baby daddy. Unless it was already existing. Officer Martinez, what can you tell us? Your Honor, this case has a lot of concerns. Um, while she did not pick up a new offense, she did pick up a CPS case while she was on probation. Um, her significant other, the father of her children, called CPS because she was under the influence of alcohol while she was caring for the baby. CPS has been involved with her case. Um, in addition to something else, her attorney said that she had two jobs. The last time she reported to us, she was unemployed and has several different men that pay for her bills, pay for her attorney. Um, we have no proof since she's been on probation that she has ever been employed. Um, she has one man that pays her um, her attorney, her bond. I She's only paid a $20 payment while she's been on probation. She's never done community service hours. She hasn't done outpatient treatment. She hasn't registered for BIP. She hasn't registered for parenting. She's provided seven, um, she's failed to submit seven different times for her UAs. She admitted to smoking marijuana because she said she was stressed out. Um, she has small children and she doesn't seem to be able to provide for them. I We offered an extension on this case. The state is requesting a revocation. We did offer a six month extension. Um, but at this point, she is non-compliant. We haven't seen her since October of 2023. And may I briefly just say one thing, Judge? Sure. I'm not, I'm not contesting those allegations. What I'm saying is that the difference between the last 17, or I guess 16 months, and now 17th month. Is I know exactly what you're saying, Mr. LaHood. I know exactly what you're saying. I don't need, there's no, there's no need to mansplain anything to me, Mr. LaHood. I totally yes, understand sir. I'm, I got the yes, same yes. education you got, and I got more life experience that you do, and I probably have a lot more certificates hanging on my wall. So I go, I get it. And the fact of the matter remains that your client got warned back in 2022 of possible ramifications to her lack of compliance. 31 days, really? She could be facing 365 days. Yes, have her wrap her head around that. Because that's where she's headed. Judge, and I ask for another chance, please. I don't want to hear from you, ma'am. Your other chance came when I granted your request for probation. That was your that was your second chance. And the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And you haven't shown this court any commitment to compliance with your probation. This isn't a trial. This is a preponderance of the evidence evidentiary standard for conditions of bond. You haven't shown any commitment to your children. And you're either going to follow the order I issued today, or you might as well invest in some blue scrubs so you can keep them for yourself over at the jail because that's where you're going to be spending a whole lot of time over the next year. Because it sounds like the kids are, are going to be taken care of by their, by their dad. What we're going to do today is this. And we still need a hearing. We still need a whole separate hearing on the motion to revoke. This is just on the bond yes. and the conditions of this bond. $2,000 bond. There's a no contact order with the complaining witness, Mr. Villamontes. She's going to um, submit to drug testing once a week. Once a week. The order, because the condition of that bond, she's to attend in person three AA or NA meetings. There's hundreds of them going on in town 24 hours a day. Figure it out. As a condition of this bond, she's to start parenting classes, which was a condition of her original 
conditions of probation. By April 28th, she's to identify either a recovery coach she's working with or a, a sponsor she's working with through uh, sober support meetings or AA meetings. This order, these conditions are zero tolerance. And she's being ordered as a condition of this bond to be fully compliant with her conditions of probation by April the 12th. That's the order. Any Your questions? Honor. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I have the victim is in court. I have his name as Christopher Rigal Montes, not Vida Montes. I have it as R-I-G-A-L hyphen M-O-N-T-E-Z. Rigal Montes. And the first name? Christopher. Christopher. Is that with an H or C-R? C-H-R. C-H-R. I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R. Christopher Rigal Montes. Okay. Thank right. you for that correction. I'll correct it on the order. Anything okay. else from anyone? Yes, from okay. the defense judge, just briefly. Uh, my notes reflect you put a, a no contact. I would just re-ask the court. There has been no subsequent testimony evidence warranting a no contact person, no harmful or injurious contact, especially considering they have told together. I would humbly re All the evidence I need is that this is a family violence case, Mr. Hillahood. That is my order. The order stands. Everyone is excused. I'm going to go type up her order. I'll be back. Thank you, Honor. So, was she too harsh? Was she harsh enough? I mean, she's got 16 probation violations. She's drunk with her kids. Her dad has to call the, her dad, the father of those kids has to call CPS. Some guy is paying her bills. She lied about having a job. She doesn't even have a job. It's, well, let me take that back. It sounds like she has the oldest job in the world. One that you don't get a W2 at. So, yeah, I, I, those kids need, the dad needs those kids. The, those kids need to be away from her. Because if that is the case, and I don't know, but you know, when you have, when some guy pays your way, pays all your bills, pays for your room, your food, you, you know, your um, attorney, that guy's getting something in return. Or there's more than one guy getting something in return. And kids should not be there. <sighs> Little kids, eight month old. I mean, come on. <sighs> anyway, I'm kind of in the camp that she wasn't harsh enough. But maybe she feels like, well, she's going to be back. But I don't know. The kids need to be the ones protected from her right now. That would be my biggest worry is those kids. So anyway, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.